I would like to remind you that our learning objective is to analyze and discuss documentation, book, book chapters, and paper capable to help us as black folk to have a broader and complex understanding of issues dealing with the political history of Haiti, the foundation of the state nation, the utopia of freedom, the social contract in 1804, and so forth. Seeing is this light, I would love to take the opportunity to bring to your memory that the Haitian Revolution is in modern history the only one successful revolution. Considering its three-fold dimension, anti-slavery, anti-colonialist, and anti-segregationist. In our previous session, I have had the opportunity to inform you on the fact that we could not understand at all the tradition of black studies and humanitarian field as African American studies without paying special attention to the Haitian Revolution. According to Ashid Bembe, Haiti has played a key role in the outbreak of the world conceived by Franz Fanon as la déclosion du monde. Seen in this perspective, Haiti is quite important for Pan-Africanism. For scholars like René de Pestre and Aimé Césaire, for instance, Haiti is known as the first black sovereign republic is also the oldest data of decolonization. Caesar said that Haiti is the place where negritude stand up, Haiti ou la negritude se met debout. Many scholars such as C.L.R. James in The Black Jacobin, Molefiquete Asante, Patrick Bergard Smith, and others are agreed on the universal impact of the Haitian Revolution. 15, 15 days ago, we have discussed on the relationship between the ancestor of the Haitian people and the making of the United States nation of America as a nation. We analyzed the importance of self-sacrifice in the building process of a state nation. And for doing so, I have drawn your attention to the work of Benedict Anderson, Benedict Anderson, a professor emeritus of international studies at Cornell University. More specifically, his book entitled Imagine Communities, Reflection on Origin and Spread of Nationalism. The ancestors of Haitian people contribute greatly in the making of the United States of America. Because in 1779, 1,500 fighters of the colony of Saint Domingue, which will become Haiti on January 1st, 1804, took part at the siege of Savannah in Georgia. Those fighters of for American freedom well called the, the Chasseur Volontaire de Saint Domingue. But the United States of America was among the powerful countries that did not recognize the, the Haitian independence in 1804, even though the US have had an important commercial exchange with Haiti during the 18th and 19th centuries. This powerful nation 
because of his white supremacy based on racism and colonialism, did not get the proper recognition to hate. It was only on April 4, 1862, in the context of the secession war, that the U.S. under the presidency of Abraham Lincoln recognized Haiti as a sovereignty and free country. The United States of America, since the early beginning of the foundation of the Haitian state, has applied a commercial embargo to what Haiti. For continuing this academic discussion on the module uh, entitled Critical Concept, an introduction to Haitian heritage, this evening we are so blessed to have among us a distinguished sociologist and outstanding scholar who has enormously contributed to the advancement of the field of Haitian studies. Our guest this evening is Professor Paul Kemi Mokom, a PhD in Comparative Studies, Sociology, and Philosophy. Currently, he holds the, uh, he works as an assistant professor uh, of philosophy and sociology at West Virginia State University in Charleston, Virginia, West Virginia. And he is also the president of the Mokobian Foundation. Professor Mokombi um, will lecture on the topic entitled The Anti Anti Dialectical Signification of LGD Dantor, and LGD Dantor is a Lua, a spirit in the Haitian voodoo, and he will uh, um, tell you more about that. So, the anti dialectical signification of LGD Dantor and Wakaima um, of the uh, Haitian Revolution. Remember, in our previous session, I um, explain, to, we analyze, you know, uh, the place of uh, Bookman duty. Uh, um, he was born um, in Jamaica, most of the scholars are agree, and one of, uh, you know, the slaves that uh, start, you know, the, the rebellion against, uh, a, a, against, you know, the, the and slavery. So, uh, anti dialectic. Also, you remember I explained you uh, uh, when the, the Haitian Revolution occurred in 1804. At that time, one important, one of the most important uh, German philosopher named George Hegel, uh, George Friedrich Hegel, um, George. Uh, uh, Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel, named as George or known as George Hegel. He, you know, he published many works uh, about the uh, liberalist, the dialectic, the dialectic idealist, the uh, dialectic, or the, uh, the dialectic uh, for his dialectical thinking. Uh, Hegel used some analytical category. Uh, taken from the Haitian Revolution because it was in Saint Domingue the only place where the slave became the masters and the master became slaves. So when we are uh, when I read the topic um, of Professor Mukombe, uh, the anti and uh, anti dialectical, so maybe he will discuss some some Hegelian perspective or new Hegelian perspective, you know, the un, un anti dialectical signification of Erzidinator and Guacaima of the uh, Haitian Revolution. And again, I would like to give you also a contextual um, 
data when the 2010 earthquake uh, happened in Haiti, one of the um, uh, uh, leader of the um, uh, Republican Party, his name is Pat Robertson. And Pat Robertson, he uh, tried to uh, let folks know that the earthquake happened because of a pact that Haitian or ancestor made in Wakaima with Satan. So when we are talking about, you know, it's a very powerful topic in the, the anti-dialectical, we have a Hegelian and neo-Hegelian perspective. The Elzili Dantor, you know, a woman, a spirit woman, the world, the place that the Haitian that women have played, you know, um, Haitian women as we say potomitan. I don't know the way to put that in English for you guys. Potomitan. So, Professor Bo, huh? Protector? No, no. Potomitan, you know, it's like the master of peace. I'm sorry. Center. Uh, the center of peace. Thank you so much. The center of peace. When we say the women, is that there is really not all is women, but also there is really is the spirit for love, you know. So we have uh, Professor Mokombe will explain you more about that. So Professor Mokombe, who is visiting New York, is also accompanied by some member of his family and friend. I would love to take the opportunity to congratulate and thank his wife, Tayala Mokombe, for the support offered to Paul. For we know all, uh, we all know that behind a great man, there is a great woman. So I, uh, can you put uh, your hands together for Tatiana uh, and the family of Paul. So, Professor Mokombi is a specialist of sociological theory, African and diasporic studies, philosophy of religion, ethics, and philosophy of science among other field of specialization. Also, he is a member of the American Sociological Association, Global Studies Association, Political Economy of the uh, World System, and American Philosophical Association. Even his, his numerous publication, we can mention uh, uh, the African Americanization of the Black Diaspora and Globalization or the Contemporary Capitalist World System. You know, he will talk to about that also because these are like a perspective um, system uh, designed by uh, Emmanuel Wallenstein, one uh, well known uh, um, social theorist. Um, also, the Vodou. Uh, Ethics and the spirit of capitalism. This title is quite important because uh, between 1904 and 1905, one important um, uh, um, German sociologist named Max Weber or Max Weber, he wrote a paper entitled uh, "The Elite Protestant: The Ethics of." Protestantism and the spirit of capitalism. So, and it's very uh, a comparison because Professor Mokombe used to be a professor of comparative politics. So, uh, it could be also important uh, to discuss with him about the, the vote to ethics and the spirit of communism. Because, uh, you know, many for fact that we don't have any ethics in, in Vodou because Vodou is, you know, for Satanasi, for, you know, the evil is so important. Also, he has published uh, Jesus and the Streets, uh, the, the Lossy of Causality in the Intral Racial, Gender, Academic Achievement Gap in Black Cuban America and the United Kingdom. Race and Class Distinction Within Black Community. Uh, a racial caste in class. Len, um, um, uh, research in race and ethnicity, 
language, literacy, and pedagogy, of course, in these two societies. Um, uh, liberal bourgeois Protestantism, the metaphysic of globalization. Opis oppositional cultural theory, the liberal black Protestant heterosexual bourgeois male from Du Bois to Barack Obama. Please put your hands to help me to give a warm welcome to Professor Paul Kemi Mokombe and his family. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. Good evening, everyone. Um, Dr. Eddie called me two weeks ago and asked me to come speak to his class about, because uh, he started, he's the new director of the Institute. So he asked me to come and lecture to you all on uh, the anti dialect. One of my, a few of my papers that I've written in some of my books on Haitian history and Haitian studies. <coughs> I told him I would be in New York because uh, my uncle passed away, and so uh, I told him I would come to his class and lecture this evening. I'm used to lecturing to graduate students, <laughs> so I will bring it down a notch, and if you have any questions when I'm done, uh, just feel free to ask any questions that you may have. I want to thank my family for being here. <laughs> to, to uh, 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 just support my aunt for uh, trying to get me back to help. I caught a cold while I was down here, so I'm struggling. I won't keep you long. I'm not long-winded. So, uh, But I will use the board because I know you all may not have half the stuff that Dr. Eddie was saying. You have no clue what he's talking about. So <laughs> I will use the board to explain. Basically, there's four we have four parts to my presentation tonight. It's not about to be long. Trust me, okay? Uh, I will explain to you what the Hegelian master slave dialectic is. And then we will take that from Hegel to Marx. We'll, we will apply it to uh, its relation to the Haitian Revolution. And in this relation to my current research, what I'm researching, what I'm writing about, what I do my presentations on, and then we will conclude where do we go from here in terms of understanding Haitian history, in terms of understanding uh, uh, Haitian the field of Haitian studies. We're okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Basically, my area of <coughs> research, most of my extensive research is on consciousness, understanding consciousness, and where consciousness comes from, who we are, what we are, where do we come from, how do we constitute who we are in the world. <coughs> I, <coughs> I build off what's called structuration theory. Structuration theory. It's a theory in sociology that says, uh, there's four key, four key figures in this theory. You have uh, Jürgen Habermas, who is a German. He was part of the Frankfurt School. I'll write the, these names down for you. Habermas, I'll use your last name. This is what we do as professors. We use your last name. Habermas. Is there a language on? Yeah, the white. Oh, is there? I use black. Can you, can you see that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Who did? So you have Habermas, Bougier, Marshall Salins. So you have Habermas, Bougier, Marshall Salins, and a guy by the name of Anthony Giddens. Giddens is a sociologist, Marshall Salins is an anthropologist, Bougier is an anthropologist slash sociologist, Habermas is a cr critical theorist. Sociologist slash philosopher as well. He studied with uh, the Frankfurt School. If you ever want to go look into the Frankfurt School, just Google them. And as you get into grad school, you'll get more into Habermas and all these other theories. <coughs> Basically, what they say about consciousness is that uh, we, we, we 
recursively reorganize and reproduce the ideas of the social structure. Society is like a social structure. And we internalize the ideas of the social structure and we recursively reorganize them and reproduce them in our practice. Now there's a problem with that theory in that you can't account for what's called agency. Uh, we call that problem the, the soft problem of consciousness. What does that mean? The soft, con the soft problem of consciousness. What that means is how do I account for that individual I that is in every single one of us? There is an individual I that I, how your taste and clothing, your your uh, what sounds you prefer, I can't account for that if I use structuration theory. I've come along and I developed a theory in grad school called phenomenological structuralism. To explain that. Now I'm not about to go into what phenomenological structuralism is. It's, it's, it's theoretical, it's dealing with physics, it's dealing with mathematics. I'm not about to go into it right now. However, what I am going to do is apply their response in relation to Hegel's master slave dialectic. Why is that important? No, 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 I'm like, it's, it's a rhetorical question. <laughs> because Hegel developed, if you, I know Dr. Eddie said he, he introduced you all to a book titled Hegel, History, and Universal, uh, Hegel, History, and, I'm sorry, Hegel, Hegel, and Universal History by Susan Buck Morris, who I was a teaching assistant for when I was in grad school. And what, she, what we have to understand is sociologically, we, all sociologists, have utilized Hegel's master-slave dialectic to explain how we develop consciousness. How do we develop who and what we are? If you begin with Charles Horton Cooley, the distinction he draws between the looking glass self and the I, how I develop my consciousness by looking through the eyes of my parents, who I am starts with my interaction with my parents. How my parents represent me through the looking glass is how I represent myself when I go out. That's just a 